Hey-yo, everyone. Here we are. Terraria tier list. I know I've done a couple throughout the last couple of years here and there. But yeah, let's get right to it right away. Let's get to the one you guys want to see. Boom. Terraria waifu chart tier list maker. And let's get to what you really want to see. I know you guys want me to delete all these rows. And I know you guys want to see this right here. Smash or pass. Look at that. I didn't even need to like touch anything. Let's get right to it. Dryad. Come on. We all know the answer. You guys should know that I'm biased towards the dryad at this point. Now, some people bring up a good point. Game Raiders, she's like 500. She's like 1,000. That's more experience on her part. That's all I'm going to say. I don't have to say anything else. Okay, so there's a little bit more than just uh, NPCs on here. You know, I never know people considered <laughs> the zombie a waifu. Even Plantera. Honestly, a little bit odd. But I'm going to just be honest with this whole entire list. All right, Empress of Light. I feel like me and Empress of Light you know we would not go together well we would not be a parent i don't think i could see myself in empress of light being a good pair especially during daytime we know how she gets during the daytime i'm gonna have to put her on pass zombie female zombie that's a for sure pass i don't even got to think about it or talk about it mechanic the mechanic she has a lot of good tools i don't know why i brought that up just put her on smash <laughs> the nurse now this one might surprise you me and the arms dealer we're buddies we're pals we know each other and the nurse is obviously his girl that's a pass i respect my boys party girl now the party girl straight up by her name you know she's a freak but you know she gets passed around so i'm gonna have to put her on pass next up we got the archer from the pirate event you know that pirates are all about their booty so i don't know how i feel about that just straight up okay just thinking about that straight up is like you know i'm not into that type of stuff I'm gonna have to put her on pass. <laughs> Plantera. Pass, obviously. Especially the one with the open mouth. What the hell? Queen Slime? You know, she do be farted. If you guys remember, when you beat her at the end of her fight, she do be farted. I don't know. <laughs> I think I'm gonna have to put pass on the steampunker here just because, like, she low key a gold digger. Because, like, I usually always buy Contaminator every run, and that's a solid two platinum. And you get, like, a little deal, obviously, put her in the right biome, you know, get her a nice fancy mansion. Maybe it's like a platinum in 80 gold, but I don't know. I'm not feeling her. Gold digger? I, I feel so. I feel like she is. And the next two, come on. She will do my hair? I always needed someone to personally cut my hair because paying for a barber is expensive. That's a smash and the zoologist come on like come on i'm putting her at near the top not higher than the dryad i'm biased on the dryad i'm telling you but there you go there's my list i don't know if anyone's missing maybe like guy game raiders where's the dudes at i don't know where are the dudes at all right we're doing terraria boss difficulty 1.4 obviously i don't think gear clops is on this list now that i look at it here we go got a full list here literally everything including torture god let's start with it so i'm gonna i'm gonna do this based on uh master mode even though i probably haven't fought all these bosses in master mode i can give a pretty good scale you know i fought a majority of them let's start with the cultists cultists if i'm gonna be honest the cultists no matter what version you're playing is probably like one of the most average if not below average bosses i'm gonna put him in c honestly he doesn't even feel like a legit a boss sometimes he just kind of feels like something that's in the way next up morning wood uh morning wood has great attacks I'm, I'm gonna consider this an average dude i feel like all event enemies and bosses they just hurt especially playing on master mode and for the worthy like they just hurt all events hurt like you gotta hide in 99 percent of terrier events if you're playing on like expert and above betsy i'm gonna put betsy in s tier if you guys have played master mode old ones army or for the worthy old ones army god damn Damn, I've never seen anything scarier. Well, there's a couple. Brain of Cthulhu. That's an F, bro. No matter what version or what difficulty you're playing on, Brain of Cthulhu sucks. We got the Dark Mage. Dark Mage, pretty easy. Even on Master Mode and For the Worthy, they're pretty easy. Uh, I'm gonna put that. I'm gonna put that in the C. We got Deer Clops. Deer Clops, low key, can be tough. If you don't have a good arena, and usually I don't even make an arena for Deer Clops, I just fight him. He gets really angry when you fly above him. Like he literally has a special attack he does when you fly above him. I'm gonna put him in a solid B. I feel like he can hit hard. At at least all the experiences i've had with him he hits hard duke 
Duke might be an S tier or a high A. Duke Fish Run is one of those master mode bosses that gave me help. Obviously, I've only played master mode with one class, so it's kind of hard to decide. But I'm going to put him high A for now. He might change the S. I still think Betsy's over him, though, just because of the whole, like, Old Ones Army event in master mode alone is tough. Ah, the Eater of Worlds, and he's got the blurriest picture on here for some reason. That is also an F tier. I would say higher than the brain. I do think he can be harder with the spitting and stuff that he does. You know, he's longer or bigger and uh, for the worthy. But I still think he's kind of whack. He's still beatable. He's a worm boss after all. Empress of Light. Now, if we talk in daytime S tier, if we talk in nighttime, is beatable. It's definitely beatable. So I would put A tier. But if we're talking daytime, I think it's an S tier. If we're talking nighttime, A tier. But not over Duke. You know what? We'll just say daytime her s tier because uh if it's gonna be over duke it's gonna be that way we got the ever scream ever scream is he stronger than the morning wood let me think i don't think so i don't think so the pin missiles can be pretty tough but i i think i'll put them side to side they both can be very annoying i cthulhu i cthulhu has never been hard that's an f the only time i cthulhu like really ever caught you off guard is like when you fight it for the first time in expert mode when you fight it for the first time in expert mode it does those fast dashes i know everybody's like whoa this is crazy but then after that it's like okay well i'm used to it now flying dutchman that's another f i think this is definitely below all of these guys no honestly i think i'm gonna put the eye i'll put the eye at the near the bottom golem <laughs> come on it says it all he's got his own spot i swear to god relogic kept on saying how they were gonna buff the golem and then like what the hell did they do ice queen one of the ugliest sprites in terraria for a boss this boss can be very very annoying uh i think i'm gonna put it just high b she's annoying just because she spams a lot of projectiles but like she, she's still killable she's honestly uh, you know i might as well do it right now like i think i put uh these two are tough these two are tough because he obviously follows you a lot better than she does but like she hurts and she spams a lot more projectiles than him so i don't know i think i think this is how i'll have it for now king slime that is deep down there maybe above the dutchman because the dutchman doesn't even touch me because i'll be in a box hiding from him so dutchman is like right there lepus now i have not gone against a master mode lepus or turkor lepus is pretty easy though lepus is pretty easy unless you can't keep control of those eggs those eggs start hatching it's over i'm gonna put lepus above king slime turkor let me do turkor real quick turkor a damn fiend turkor is scary i'm gonna put turkor like b maybe even a because if you guys have played i'm not talking about 3ds mobile old console version i'm talking about consularia which is the mod that adds in turkor and lepus and akram to 1.3 they be tough they really do be tough as hell especially turkor and i have not gone against a master mode version of him but every time i fight turkor he beats my ass either because i don't have the right equipment just underprepared because like when the hell do you fight turkor they say before skeletron they say after skeletron i feel like i always get my ass beat no matter what it's just his neck his neck is dangerous his neck and his head martian saucer this is definitely an a tier unless you get a nice little exploit or little arena where you run have enough room to run or teleport if you guys remember the master mode series you remember what i did this one is tough though just because it hurts it really does hurt i think i'm gonna put it over turkor under duke though moon lord now i've heard moon lord in master mode and for the worthy can be a pain in the ass personally have never fought it yet but i'm gonna I'm believe you guys i'll put it in s tier i think i'll put it uh, yeah i'll put it over empress of light s tier we got the pillars i should have made like a spot for the pillars because like all the pillars they're pretty easy except for one like this one like come on <laughs> i'm putting this pillar at the top but all the other pillars i would put them in like average they're okay maybe like the nebula one would be higher because i feel like it's the only other one that i struggle with but i, I think this is a fine order Akram. Akram can be a tough fight it also is not too tough of a fight again we don't have a master mode Akram or for the worthy one that we can go against so kind of hard to judge that i think Akram is a very just average boss like i fought him on console like i actually have fought him on console not just through console area and uh you know he was beatable it was doable ogre ogre that's another pretty average might be below average i think i'll put him over the dark mage he's just like better than the dark mage plantera plantera is always tough if you don't got a good arena you got a nice big arena though plantera is easy i'm gonna put her i'm gonna put her high b really depends because she's definitely an a tier if you got a bad arena because she hurts she does crazy damage in har harder difficulties queen b that's another boss that's pretty easy decent arena equals a w that's like most bosses in terrain if we're being honest always the preparation really matters so i'm gonna put her i'm gonna put her like i, I wouldn't say like she's harder I, I don't know i wouldn't say she's 
easier than the dark mage either kind of like you i feel like these two ain't too bad compared to betsy but like it's the queen bee she's all, i'll put her down there <laughs> queen slime this was like one of my first hard mode master mode fights and i was getting my ass beat but other than that she's not too bad once you really get a nice arena there i go saying nice arena again you get a nice space you understand a couple of her attacks she's not too bad i'm gonna say she's an average i'll definitely probably put her like here maybe even higher because she's got like pretty yeah, i'll put her like there She's got a lot of projectiles, man. Sand tank. This dude. He's like right here. Skeletron. I know a lot of people have problems with Skeletron. I don't know why. I remember X Rebound Skeletron used to be low key tough, but then like I kind of just got over it, especially with that minecart strategy I do where I build like a diamond shaped minecart track. <laughs> so Skeletron, this dude, he's average now. I would say, yeah, they use a little bit. The Queen Bee is a little bit uh, easier than him. All right, let's do the three mech bosses together here. I think there's a pretty obvious order. Honestly, I feel like my order might be backwards to most people's orders because the twins is honestly the mech boss i always struggle with the most and i usually either start with prime or i start with the destroyer never the twins unless they spawn on their own or unless it's a very specific situation like i have their summon first and not the other two so skeletron prime i consider that a very like average fight uh, i wouldn't consider it too hard and for the worthy he does get a little messy i'll give him that destroyer usually easy I'm gonna drop the destroyer into C. Uh, honestly, the lunatic cultist might be better than him, but whatever. I don't care. It doesn't have to be that specific. Twins, I'm gonna put above Skeletron Prime. That's about it. Next up, we have not the torch god, the wall of flesh. Wall of flesh. Never usually have troubles with wall of flesh. The only time I ever have troubles is when the arena is not properly set up, as for most terraria bosses. I consider him, I would say he's a below average. He's very cool for a boss that brings you into hard mode. I think when I first fought him, he was a spectacle of a boss. So I'm gonna put him in like C. I definitely think the destroyer is harder than him. <laughs> Not much. And then Torch God, S tier hardest boss in the game. All right, here we are, Terraria Biomes. I'm gonna be using the default one of whoever made this left. Usually I like to change it so it's just S, A, B, C, F. Cause people on tier maker, they be putting way too many tiers. It's like, you only need like five. All right, first one, we got the mine shaft. Mine shaft, helpful. You always find good loot there, usually golden chests. Would I say very helpful? Possibly. It could definitely be very helpful because what? You get Hermes boots, double jump, horseshoes, like you get some goodies. But look at it, they got a helpful pre hard mode. Like, uh, what are the, you know what? I'm doing this. I'm making my own. <laughs> this is why I never use other people's uh, tears because they're kind of whack. All right, Crimson Corruption. I think the Crimson is cooler than Corruption, but like they're not anything special in terms of, you know, I love them. I don't go to these biomes and I'm like, oh my God, I love this. I usually like the Crimson more just because I think the Crimson theme's a lot cooler. And also usually Crimson stuff is better. Desert. The desert has gotten a little bit better in a 1.4 uh not really they kind of added an oasis which is i guess technically it is a desert here and there but like you'd be fine a really tiny oasis is barely even connected to deserts i'm gonna give the desert a c the top the above ground desert whack dungeon okay got it dungeon dungeon is a pretty good one a lot of good loot there i'll put that a uh, a lot of people get their goods here you know a lot of classes get their upgrades here both hard mode and pre-hard mode so i would say it's above the mine shaft possibly even an s tier place a lot of dangerous enemies though which that might be the reason why it doesn't go into s tier the regular forest biome come on the purity biome is an s tier man that is easily an s tier is debatably one of the best biomes in the game until this one right here i'm biased okay you know the mushroom channel anything mushroom related in any video game i'm kind of biased to put this in s really not much to it and really i shouldn't put it in s but just because you know i'm by you know let's do this there you go that game raiders biome and then we'll add a uh another tier here that will be actually s okay there you go <laughs> hollowed hollowed is a great biome i honestly might put that s or high a uh the reason why i like the hollowed so much a lot of good loot you can get your hands on also npcs can actually live there and not be mad i always thought like what's the point of adding in npc happiness and anger if they can't live here and be angry you know what i'm saying and then like half the world you get in a hard mode your whole world starts getting corrupt if you don't think about it ahead of time it's a big headache and that's why I, this thing is miles above these two here jungle above ground jungle cool kind of pointless most of the time you don't really do anything in the above ground jungle that's like an average honestly might be i, I think i'll put it on the desert jungle temple you fight the golem there that's about it ft <laughs> 
meteorite biome you get meteorite there that's the f tier ocean ocean biome you fight duke there and other than that it's there's not really anything there i'm gonna put it low c there's not much to do there i do wish they expand the oceans but that's what we got to your mods for above ground snow biome you fight deer clops there that's about it you know you get the little blizzard every now and then i think i put it above here you know what let's put the desert above the jungle because there is the uh, sandstorms which make them a little bit cooler but they they need more personality that's not enough space biome space biome that is pretty much f tier not much up there besides the wyvern even then you don't have to really go all the way in this space and then there's the martian probe that's if you even want to fight the martians is there's not much out there we got the underground corruption and underground crimson i think i'm putting these above the uh, regular variants just because you get souls souls are pretty useful they're also really not hard to uh farm you know honestly i think i might put them in a because they're really useful same thing with the uh, underground hollowed underground hollowed i think is more useful just because there's a slight chance you could get something called the rotted discord i know some of you may be like what the hell is that never heard of it me too underground desert way better after this uh 1.4 update i'm gonna say that's that's a that's a that's a high i would put that in a tier i think it's way more fun to explore a lot more dangerous it's exciting being down there underground jungle we got plantera a bunch of good loot i'm gonna say that's an average regular underground that's that's literally as average as you can get hell hell low-key might be an f because other than going there to fight the wall of flesh what the hell else do you do biomes that are like one and done are kind of whack honestly like most of these biomes are one and done so i'm gonna put it in f they could use more potential i don't know add another hell theme boss something like that underground ice biome it's okay it's okay i put it like maybe b I, I i would put it above that at least all right i think this is the last list i'll do for this video better terraria mods list damn we got some mods in here not all of them uh not all the ones that i know and love but a majority of good ones in here there's a lot of uh, ones in here that i don't even know and haven't played yet so i'm not gonna give them a rating usually i don't like giving terraria mods like a full rating or opinion unless i play through the whole thing but uh you know the mods update so many times it's like can you really play through the whole thing that often let's start with the first one this is ancients awaken ancients awaken pretty cool pretty cool mod very expansive adds in a lot of content there's like majority of these but this one i definitely remember standing out because it had a uh, just a lot of new biomes in it. I'm gonna say that's an A tier mod, above average. B is our average usually. C would be our below average. A's are above average. You guys get it by now. Alchemist NPCs, I consider that an S tier mod. Uh, I do wanna do a video about talking about quality of life mods, like top 10, top five quality of life mods. I've always wanted to do a video like that. I'll get around to it. Next up, we got Anti-Aris, Anti-Aris, however you pronounce it. Uh, this mod had potential, kind of just fell off the map. I don't know if the developers lost interest or what, but uh, I, I would say it's a below average mod. It's got a cool boss, Antlion Queen, and it's got another boss that I haven't even fought. But other than that, it's okay. Yeah, I mean, it's nothing special. Like, I, I wouldn't even say it's average just because, you know, it's kind of falling off, falling off the map. There's no updates to it. Not much to say there. Next up, we got the Calamity mod. Everyone's favorite mod, the only mod that exists for Terraria. Nobody can stop talking about it. That is a solid A tier. Top, very tier be top of a tier almost an s tier but the community drags it down a lot i'm sorry it's just facts next up we got consolaria consolaria i consider a a tier mod i kind of wish that they tweaked a couple things polished it out like i know it's adding console and uh you know mobile content but like they can polish it up a little bit there's a couple things here and there that annoy me in the mod next up elements awoken elements awoken pretty cool mod it's got some uh bosses in there that are pretty cool but other than that i don't don't remember it standing out too much this might be an average content mod next up we got fargo's mod and fargo souls i consider both these mods s tier uh i believe fargo is one of the better mod creators when it comes to team mod loader he's got a lot of cool mini mods he's got great big content mods eternal mode eternity mode whatever it's called is cool masochist mode all that next up we got the juice mod the juice mod i'm putting up as a high a juiced is my boy he's got like my terraria lore in there shout out that boy juiced i do wish it was updated more but you know things happen all right next up we have the enigma mod the enigma mod is pretty cool i don't remember the last time it updated i do remember though that it has the steam trio which is really cool and then it also had the whole like biome thing or uh what was it honestly it had like the first dimension where like the dimension flipped into a new dimension and you fought all these different versions of the 
giving little bosses pretty cool i might actually put that high a uh i would probably put that honestly above consolari and inches awaken next up the pinkies mod pinkies mod is a pretty cool mod haven't played too much of it i usually just throw it into a pack here and there never sat down and did a full playthrough throwing that in the average mods nothing from it i think that i can think of that stands out like crazy next up qwerty's mod kind of the same opinion about that one nothing too crazy about it still not a bad mod at all though next up terraria randomizer this is what i call an s tier mod i love little terraria mods that try to add in little tweaks and challenges and make things fun because you get tired of everyone trying to make the next big terraria content mod and if we look here what we got like one two three four five six seven eight nine ten like 15 mods in here out of like 20 30 mods and all of them are majority just trying to be big content mods that change the whole game you get kind of tired of that especially as a terraria content creator so the randomizer is a breath of fresh air i love it next up we have the mod of redemption the mod of redemption is what i consider perfect example of a terraria mod that adds in just perfect content that fits the game feels like i'm playing a dlc of terraria rather than an overhaul or completely new game like calamity i am putting this this is our first s tier content mod first s tier content mod don't have any specific order here when it comes to the s tier these are just all great next up we have the shadows of abaddon shadows of abaddon pretty cool mod pretty nice mod i know the person who makes it the uh, main developer cool person uh the mod though on the other hand doesn't get updated enough and i feel like it doesn't do anything too crazy there's a couple of fun bosses here and there a lot of good looking sprites but like in terms of like game changing anything that sticks out like crazy it doesn't have too much of but i will put it in a because this is definitely uh, a content mod that i enjoy probably more than these three the spirit mod the spirit mod is a Another perfect example of what I call a just great and perfect Terraria mod. I'm putting it up here with the mod of redemption. These two are like Terraria DLCs. If Relogic went, hey, we're dropping a DLC, Spirit Mod DLC, Mod Redemption DLC. Perfect. I would download it. Terraria overhaul. Uh Terraria overhaul is cool. That's about it. That's all I gotta say about it. I feel like people definitely uh talked about it way too much. I feel like it's overrated, kind of like a calamity thing, because like the only ever thing you would hear about Terraria mods is oh Terraria overhaul. Overhaul. Hey, have you played Calamity Mod? Hey, have you played Terry Overhaul? And Terry Overhaul, I like the idea of it. It's cool, but like it's it's average. Other than that, man, like I'd rather play a content mod than play Terry Overhaul. Next up, Thorium, another perfect example of an S tier DLC Terraria mod. Throw it at the top. This is like the OG S tier Terraria mod, in my opinion. These three right here are just they're just great Terraria mods, man. If you ever want to jump into mod Terraria for the first time, this is the mod I would say to play. And once you come along little bit of a seasoned veteran you know hop into some calamity get like a whole world change you want to get even crazier i don't know I, I was gonna say something else but starlight river that's not out yet next up i believe this is like various npcs mod more npcs mod i've used this mod before uh mainly for terraria olympics <laughs> so uh it's, it's, a, it's a cool mod it's like average it just adds in more npcs which is always cool next up we have the weapon out mod the weapon out mod cool mod lets you hold your weapons on your terraria sprite i'm I'm gonna put that high b it's other than that it's pretty average actually i think i'm gonna move it to a just because it adds in a fist class and i really like that terraria fist class next up we got afk pets it's a nice little mod to have in you know a giant content pack other than that i don't know it's nothing too crazy amulet of many minions if you guys have seen my videos on this whew, you know that i love this mod that's an s tier mod man great minions i love that it adds in the little minion subclass they're doing so much more with this too they're adding way more content to it it's all Awesome. if we ever do the master mode summoner again for 1.4 i'm using this mod man bismuth bismuth was a mod that was above everything else when it first was announced and came out i remember everyone being so hyped about the bismuth mod and then what happened it fell off the face of the earth like many terraria mods but i still consider it a cool mod i wish they just did more with it man because this really would have been revolutionary this mod would have been like the starlight river of back then but you know just i'm putting it in c i'm putting it high c it's still very unique but like other than that there's not much to it next up we got the crystallium mod man the crystallium mod that's an og mod og mod just off of that alone i'm gonna put a high b 
adds in a cool biome and a cool boss but like not too much else like you really gotta ask yourself sometimes like do i want to go out of my way to go to this biome and fight this boss like i might as well i installed the mod dragon ball terraria i played the original version a long time ago i heard there was supposed to be like a giant update and overhaul recoding of the mod don't know what happened haven't been keeping up with it since fell off the face of the earth i consider it an a tier mod though it's very fun it was definitely a unique playthrough check out the series it should still be on the channel it was like pretty much stream maybe i'll hop back in it again i don't know all right this is a mod i haven't played i believe this is like the gen sioko mod gen sokyo something like that i haven't played it g realm i have played g realm and i like g realm a lot i'm gonna put g realm in a yeah i think a is a good spot g realm one of the dev the literally the developer of g realm is a part of the official terraria development team grox i believe that's his name so like you know that is a good content mod uh we got the jojo stands mod haven't touched next up the orchid mod I love the Orkin mod. That's a high A tier. I'm putting that way up there. Adds in a bunch of fun classes. Uh, I wish the classes were developed a little bit more in terms of like, you know, being able to play them from beginning to end. But, you know, in due time, it'll happen. Polarities mod. This is another S tier content mod, man. It's a great mod. I love it. All right. Next up, we have the Pump King mod or Terror King mod. Something like that. This was a cool mod back in the day. Adding a pr added in a pretty unique boss back then. But other than that, it's, it's nothing crazy for now i'd put it in c nowadays this is the uh risk of rain slash risk of slime rain mod haven't played it sga from what i've seen sga can be a good mod from what i've seen though a couple things are a little weird here and there i didn't like a lot of the sprites but recent updates have definitely improved them i really got to give it a full playthrough to see but for now i'm gonna put it i'm gonna put it in like b maybe even c like there's potential there i need to play through it though to really see it but i have played around with it here and there next up is the split mod the split mod is a cool mod the split mod is one of those mods that can really revolutionize terraria modding and honestly i might put this as another s tier i feel like the mod itself still feels really small to be a content mod but like it's still a great addition i'm not saying it has to be like a overhaul so much content like calamity or even thorium i consider that an s tier mod it's one of my favorite mods to check out when it updates i have no idea what this is and this is how i try to figure out the name of the mod was going like this because you tell me the name game terraria did not tell me the name so i have no idea what the hell that is the glory mod i don't think i played that mod this mod i definitely have not played was this sexodia i i don't know looks like a meme mod if it is a meme mod i put it in f i don't really mess with meme mobs meme mods in terraria they just kind of they're just memes it's like what else do we got this one nascape i don't know what is this we got the apotho apotheosis and friends this is a cool mod i haven't messed around with it too much i'll, I'll put it i'll put a high c it's the iridium mod haven't played the iridium mod and then this is a shapeshifter mod shapeshifter mod that's gonna be like a low c uh the idea is cool the icon is cool but uh in terms of how they executed everything kind of feels like it's lazy or they just didn't have enough experience to really code anything cool like you're literally just dressing up as the terrarium mobs or bosses but yeah there you go there there was the tier list video. We'll probably do more of these because obviously there's a lot of things to uh, tier in here. A lot of tier list to do. If you guys don't see a tier list on here, you know, maybe leave it in the comments and maybe I'll make it or maybe you make it and then we'll go through them. But yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed. I'll see y'all next time. Sorry for the lack of videos and stuff and streams. You know, I've been, I'm playing Elden Ring like everybody else. We're playing Elden Ring. I'll see y'all next time.